JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for November the 6th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued to drifting south against all the other G10 currencies on Thursday and during the Asian morning Friday. The main gainers were Aussie, Kiwi, the Pound and NOC, while the Greenback lost the least ground versus the Canadian dollar. The weakening of the US dollar combined with the strengthening of the risk link to Aussie and Kiwi suggests that the financial community continued trading in a, in a risk on manner. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that uh, major EU and US indices were a sea of green, although investors' appetite softened today in Asia. In Asia. Japan's Nikkei 225 closed 0.91% uh, higher, but China's Shanghai Composite, Hong Kong's Hang Seng, and South Korea's KOSPI are currently down 024 0.04, 0.04, and 0.36% uh, uh, respectively. As we noted yesterday, the catalyst behind the rally in EU equities may be the fact that uh, Joe Biden is getting closer or is getting closer to securing the 270 electoral votes needed to become the next US president. Although Trump alleged the voting fraud, filed uh, lawsuits and called for recounts in some states. It seems that investors believe that Biden will adopt a softer stance uh, than Trump in handling the trade relationships of the US uh, and the rest of the world. Wall Street gained as well as uh, Republicans appeared, uh, appear likely to, to retain majority in the Senate, something that will make it hard for Biden to proceed with the tax increases and stricter regulation he promised. In the FX world, Biden is seen as negative for the US dollar due to his fiscal agenda being looser than Trump's, but with Republicans staying in control of uh, the Senate, he may not be able to push through his plans, to push through with his plans. That said, investors kept uh, selling dollars, perhaps in anticipation that this could uh, pressure the Fed to step up its uh, stimulus efforts. Speaking about the Fed, uh, the committee ended a two-day monetary policy meeting yesterday. They decided to keep their monetary policy settings unchanged and to proceed with virtually no changes in the accompanying statement, maintaining their pledge to do whatever they can to support the coronavirus hit economy. Investors may take a cue on whether additional action uh, could come in December from the US employment report for October due to be released later today. Non-farm payrolls are expected to have increased by 600,000, less than September 661,000, but still a very good number consistent with further improvement in the labor market. The unemployment rate is forecast to have declined to 7.7% from 7.9%, while average hourly earnings are anticipated to have slowed somewhat to 4.6% year-over-year from 4.7%. In our view, a decent report may increase the chances for Fed officials uh, to stand pat at the December meeting, as it would signal that uh, the already adopted stimulative measures are having the desired effect on the economy. We may need to see those forecasts uh, being missed for investors to add, to add to speculation that the Fed could increase its uh, easing efforts uh, next month. Now, as uh, for the rest of today's events, apart from the US employment report, we also get the jobs data for October from Canada as well. The unemployment rate is forecast to have declined to 8.8% from 9%, while the net change in employment is expected to show that the economy has gained 100,000 jobs, less than the 378.2 thousand uh, gain in September. 
We also have two Bank of Canada speakers on the agenda, and those are Governor Tiff uh, Macklem and Deputy Governor uh, Lawrence uh, Schembri. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week uh, much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.